John here guys and today we are talking about the Diatone GTB339 that's right the bigger cube this thing reminds me of gleaming the cube and if you aren't up on your fine film culture gleaming the cube was a 1989 classic 80s movie starring Christian Slater, the poster boy for teenage angst. Adults are predictable. They're uh, they're living under this illusion that life as we know it is going to continue forever. At the time, and it is a skateboarding movie. I'm not sure what gleaming the cube means. Is that an actual skateboard term? Who knows? But it stars a lot of classic skaters: Rodney Mullen, Mike V. And of course, before he was famous, Tony Hawk. I said, Come on, come on. Really, really cool. If you haven't checked that out, definitely check it out. It was written by Tolkien. Who did you think I was talking about? So the cube, the larger one, this is the bigger version of the 229 cube and it is from the center stack up, it is identical. All of the same components are on here. The Mamba 16 by 16 stack, the Team Black Sheep Nano Pro 32 VTX, one of the best VTXs on the market included in this thing and the Runcam Nano 2 camera. Even the 3D printed orange cube canopy is the same. Um, so what are the differences? Well, as you can see, the frame has increased in size. Um, in addition to that, it also has some of these Mamba 1105 5500 kV motors. Now these larger motors and frame mean that you can swing a three inch prop. That increases your disc area from 65 millimeters quite a bit. Now what does that mean? It means that you're going to gain about 15 grams. This cube weighs about 50 grams. This cube weighs about 65 grams. So that 15 gram weight difference is going to really be significant. Percentage wise, that's quite a jump in weight. And also you'll wanna run a larger battery instead of a 300 milliamp 3S pack, you'll most likely wanna run something like this Tattoo 450, which is also heavier. So your all up weight will definitely increase, but what also increases is the power. Oh my goodness, the power, the maneuverability, the control. Um, you can feel that weight um, in the air, but the power that this thing has definitely makes up for it. I really appreciate all of the Diatone um, little touches that they put, the little chamfered sort of chromed edge screws that they include for the motors and the pod. Um, those are just simply beautiful. They really make this build look like something else. The way that they um, run the wires kind of on the inside of the spindles and zip time right there, it just makes it look so clean, so crisp. Now, the larger cube does have a thicker frame. I believe this is like three mils as opposed to two on the smaller one. So you are beefing it up. It does have the same non-existent motor protection for these larger motors in a crash. Um, you may hit these and these small motors just are not meant to make uh, contact with anything, but hopefully your large prop will prevent you from doing that. Uh, it comes with some extra goodies in the box, just like the last one, a little buzzer that you can install. It comes with an extra strap, some zip ties and a little other connectors hardware. I love that they come with these extras and some stickers. So you may be tempted to look at these at a glance and think like George Lopez says, it's the same shit. It's the same shit. The same shit. Uh, but it's 
kind of is and it's kind of not. For a scant $10 extra, you can upgrade to a larger frame, beefier motors, and the ability to run beefier props. You're essentially gonna be running the same battery. So it comes down to where you wanna fly. This is definitely faster on the top end. The tune on this out of the box on the smaller cube was sensational. One of the best out of the box tunes I've ever flown, period. This one is definitely very flyable and controllable, but I was getting some mid throttle oscillations on this. So in order to really keep this for long term, I would want to do some tuning. I'd have to go back and watch some of those Bardwell videos where you can determine from the sound of the fluttering if that's P term or I term oscillations and manipulate that. Ah. It ships with 3.57, so maybe if I put a newer one, it would reduce that with the, but like, ah, who wants to do that crap? I just want to fly these things. I put an XM Plus on this one. And I did take the time to actually run the antennas through the little antenna holes right here. Um, you know, I don't really see much of a difference, but uh, I was out of these smaller XM receivers, so I went ahead and used the XM Plus, which works fine. The stack, as always, is just stunningly beautiful. I have still not worked on one of these stacks in a build of my own yet but on these bond and flies god the the soldering work on there is so good um if you want to imagine how small these pads are and how close they are together if you've ever seen like an esc like a full-size esc with a connector and you broke the harness off and you can kind of see the pads there and if you're really skilled you could solder the wires directly to those pads it's almost that small it's really really small to solder onto this um if, if you've built your own stack using one of these tiny 16 by 16s comment in the comments how was it um but golly guys it's just down to that same question now in this size with the bind and flies getting so good and this is actually a plug and play because it's not shipped with a receiver um getting so good is it worth it is it worth it to build your own anymore this you can have for $139.99, but if you look on sale, you can easily save five to 10% off of that, making the price even lower. So 150 bucks once you add your receiver, uh, whereas your twig build kit is gonna run you 20, 30 dollars more, depending on what receiver you're gonna go with. And that's only gonna have 1103 motors. What about the 1105s? This is faster. If you want breakneck speed, if you actually wanted to go onto a racetrack with some five inch cats, you're gonna want this compared to this. This, I don't know the exact numbers, but let's just say for reference, if this goes 50 miles an hour, this goes like 65-ish. It's, it's that much faster um, if you really pump on it. You can feel the weight though. It starts to have less of that toothpick immediate, you know, response where as soon as you touch the throttle, it flies up in the air. It flies more similar to a full size quad where you can feel some of that weight. If you want to be able to fly these and you're a racer or a freestyler and you don't want to mess up as much of your muscle memory, this may be a little bit closer to that full size flight feel than one of these. If you've flown one of these two pit class, you know that they feel so light in the air that it's a little bit strange at first how little throttle you can take to kind of knock these around. Um, so it's up to you what you prefer. I still feel comfortable enough to fly this straight at my house. Um, I don't know. I did fly it into my arm. I'll put a little picture on the screen. It really didn't do anything. Uh, I took this over to try to get some footage at the park, had a couple of kids come by, did a couple of little ride alongs for them. Um, one kid, his mom said that he, uh, he doesn't have any consoles at home, so he probably didn't know what was going on when I handed him the little monitor to watch the FPV feed, but he thought it was pretty cool. Uh, he was like seven or eight, and then another kid came by right after, so I had to give him a ride along too. He was probably closer to four. He really liked it, and it was starting to get dark, so I had to pack up and leave. And as I was rolling my stuff away, he was crying in the background. 
he didn't even want to go play on the playground. He wanted to watch more FPV. And so I felt bad, but I was like, hey, it's getting dark, you know, I don't want to get this thing lost in the field because it's so tiny, it's going to be hard to find. Uh, but that's the power of FPV, guys. He didn't even want to play on the playground. He only wanted to watch more FPV. And this is the kind of power that this craft will have on you and anyone who beholds it. Uh, if I had to choose, which one would I go with? It depends on what size of an area you want to be able to fly in. The smaller area that's still outdoors, go with the small cube. If you have a little bit more room, you want a little bit more power, a little bit more speed on the top end, um, a little bit thicker of a frame, uh, then I would have no problems recommending this thing. These Mamba motors are incredibly efficient. I don't know how Diatone does this time and time again. Even with the GTR349, that is maximum speed, ludicrous speed, faster than all my five inches, it was incredibly efficient compared to any of the other three inch builds that I've ever built. And this is the same thing. I'll include a flight um, either here in the middle or somewhere at the end, but basically doing not balls to the wall full throttle the entire time, but probably a flight where I probably did 20 or 30 power loops. The battery lasted seven and a half minutes, seven and a half minutes. I was almost getting bored. I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna see how long until it starts to fall out of the sky. When I landed, the battery was like 3.3 volts and it bounced back up to 3.5 within like 30 seconds on the charger. So, if you were just flying around doing no power moves, I mean, on a 450, this thing could last like nine minutes. That's incredible efficiency. Uh, uh, something that I've never seen the likes of. A lot of people are constantly asking in the comments on every craft imaginable, what's the flight time? What's the flight time? That's kind of a strange question, guys. The flight time depends on how you fly, how you fly it. I can make any quadcopter, bind and fly, home built, racer freestyler, I can deplete a battery in less than 60 seconds by just mashing on that throttle. So if you are flying fast, if you're racing, if you're doing battery torture tests, if you're doing super freestyle power moves constantly, the battery's not gonna last. If you're just floating around, it's gonna last forever, well, almost forever. Uh, so quit asking that flight time question. That is up to you. It's also up to what size battery you're using. Um, I really wish that a good company like the Heli Nation guys would make a 3S 350. Uh, that would save you a little bit of weight. I've, I've tried this on a 300 and it flies very well. I just wish it had a little bit more juice, uh, but it's still very flyable. You can still get two and a half, three minutes on a tiny little 300 and that weight savings is quite nice. So what do you think guys, which cube is for you? Stay tuned because in the next week or two, I'm gonna do a toothpick bind and fly roundup where I recommend uh, the top five crafts that you should buy. And then we're gonna do a head to head comparison. This versus my twig build kit, um, which is gonna be buy it or build it. Thanks guys.